friends, it's Terry Gaines. In this video tutorial, I'm going to share two envelope books I created. One has puppy dogs on it, and the other one has cats on it. And they both are created with materials from one of Stampin' Up's kit collections. This kit is called By Your Side. It has all the materials to make eight cards and you get eight envelopes. I'm going to repurpose this kit include a few other materials and make some envelope books. I'm going to provide all the details so you can duplicate this. So I have some Baker's twine wrapping around the envelope book to close it. Most of these embellishments are from the kit. You open it up and you have a spot to insert two two and a half by two and a half photos or you can do some journaling here or stamp some sentiments and it has a pocket in here with the envelope that you can put a three by four photo on both sides or do some stamping on the basic white or um, journaling. And then this fits back into the envelope. You turn the page, you have room for another photo that is three by four, two and a half by two and a half. It opens up for two more three by four photos and another pocket insert right here. This is so fun to create. I'm going to go step by step and show you how I created the one with the dogs. I also duplicated it, changed up some colors, and used a few different materials from the kit and created one with the cat images. So they are so fun to create. I'm going to give you everything that you need to duplicate this. So first we need to um, go through the kit and pick the materials out that we need. The kit is amazing. Along with all the materials, you're going to get a um, instructions, colored step-by-step -step instructions to duplicate the beautiful design Stampin' Up! has created. But you can use this kit and make other things. So in the kit, you're going to get a clear block. It is different than the ones you can purchase from Stampin' Up! But it is it does work for your photopolymer stamps. You get these adhesive back gold hearts. We're going to use some of those on the project. The stamp set has some images and it has some sentiments. So I actually used every sentiment and every image on my two books out of the stamp set. So I'm going to set that there. It has dimensionals. We'll go ahead and use those for the project. It has an ink spot that's old olive. I'm using Crumb Cake Memento, and then I also used Basic Gray for the cat. Um, so I'm not going to use that. These are already printed and die cut. So for the cat album, I used the cat images. I'm going to take out four of these, two of each of the designs for the card that I'm going to assemble in this tutorial. So you have enough of these images to create and supplies to create four of these books or eight cards. You have these that are die cut. I'm going to take two of them for one book. As I mentioned, you have enough for four books in the kit. And then you have four of these. Um, I'm only going to use one. So I'm just going to take one. I didn't use all of those. I used one of these on the cat book. These cards I used for the cat book, you get four of those. And these are the ones I used for the dog book. So I'm going to take two of those. And then you have eight envelopes. I used these for the cat and these two for the dog. So I'm going to put everything I'm not using back into the kit and just set that all aside along with the instructions and we will get started on our project. I do have a list of materials and measurements for my envelope book and you can download this from my blog. There'll be a PDF with the measurements, as I said, and the supply list, along with photos of the dog book and photos of the cat book, each page. So for the measurements, or let me rephrase that, for the materials, you need two decorative envelopes. 
Well, I usually pick out envelopes that have more design here, but you know what? The beauty of stamping is we can stamp these. So I did that ahead of time. I took the bone stamp and one of the paw stamps and I used crumb cake. I will tell you that my crumb cake ink pad needs to be re-inked, but that was okay because I like the more subtle look with the ink. So I went ahead and stamped the front and the back of the envelope. So I have my two decorative envelopes. So I'm going to exchange those for this. We need two decorative card bases. One is left whole and one is left, or I'm sorry, one is used to cut the decorative panels. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those now. Now, um, I made one ahead of time and you can make yours different than I made mine, but the first one I need is a two inch by five and a half. This is already five and a half and I chose to use a two inch that is the solid color over here. So I'm going to cut the two inch from this side. And so now I have a two by five and a half. I'm going to set that in my pile of supplies. Then I need quantity four that are one by five and a half. I'm going to cut two of them here and then I'm gonna take these two images here. And I am going to cut these slightly smaller than one inch because I don't want to get any of the green image on. So I'm going to go seven eighths of an inch, which is totally fine. You can modify any of these measurements. So I'm going to go seven eighths and cut that. And that's going to be for one of the five or one of the one by five and a half. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this one first. I'm going to cut the two that I told you about first. Once I get this all done, maybe it'll make more sense. And when you see how I did the project where I use these, I think you'll understand more why I did what I did. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I need to cut this one. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to cut it right on the score line. I can see where my blade cuts. I can see the score line. So the first thing I'm going to do is make that cut. That way I have a starting point for my seven eighths. Then I can move over here and move that to my seven eighths and then cut that. So as I mentioned, the goal was not to get any of the green on these strips. And to be honest with you, I'm not using the green at all on this, this book. I use this on the cat book. So when I show you the cat book a little bit closer, you'll see where I use that. All right, so what I'm going to do is set the cutter aside and we need two postcards. I've been using the basic, um, the thick basic white cardstock. They're four and a quarter by five and a half. And that's what we need kind of for the construction part of the book. These are decorative, but they are construction part of the book. And the rest of the panels and images are more the decorative. So all the books I, I will be sharing on my blog and YouTube channel will have this construction the same if I'm using two envelopes. I do have a book I designed that has four envelopes and four cards. I'll share that in the upcoming days. But um, let's 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 talk about this book. All right, so let's in construct this one. What we want to do is put these envelopes back to back, and let me show you. The envelopes are on the outside, and the flaps are adhered together. But we want the spacing here. This it this to actually be able to expand. So when we adhere these flaps together, we don't want to adhere them right close to here so they're really tight. Otherwise, your book's gonna be narrow here and wide here. We want it to have some room for expansion. So what I'm going to do is take my adhesive and I actually grab my Seal Plus. You can use your Seal or um, your Seal Plus and or your favorite adhesive. 
Now my adhesives here, how I line these up is I put them just like this. I get them lined up from the bottom, lined up on the top, and then I bring the flaps together and that's going to adhere them. So this is what I was referring to. We want some space here. We want that to be able to expand if it needs to. Now I have made a few of these and I think every time I make one, I, I think of something maybe I should do different or overthink things. But um, now what I'm going to do is give you some tips. The card opens like this and we're going to adhere it to this flap. Well, I like this to be the decorative side and because this has no top or bottom, I'm going to rotate mine this way so when I open my book, this is what I see first. So I'm going to do that. The other thing I'm going to do is when I adhere this, I always, in my previous video tutorial, I said go equal spacing top and bottom, and that's true, we still wanna do that. I said you wanna see a little bit of space here. I'm gonna suggest that you make it flush to that side. It is not a problem if you've already made one from my other tutorial where you've left some space to see the envelope but we're gonna move that flush. That just gives you more room right here, more space between before you hit that score line. So once you have this all lined up, I'm going to open this up and open this up. What we're going to do is adhere this flap to the, this inside part of this card base. And I'm going to take my adhesive and go straight down the card base and then follow the curve of the envelope. Oops, I went over. I'm going to grab my seal. There we go. And then you're going to close that. That adhered it to here. So it gets adhered to that flap. Now you have this seam here and I like to cover that up. I like to camouflage that and that's where the two by five and a half panel comes that we cut from that card base, it's going to be adhered right here to camouflage that seam. Now it would seem like, well, you could put adhesive here and here and create a pocket. Your items are going to be caught on that flap. So I'm not going to create a pocket. Um, I'm going to just put my adhesive on here and line this up and I think sometimes it's easier to move that envelope out of the way so you can see that you're getting it lined up with the edge of the card base and just the purpose is to cover that seam up so we've we've accomplished that now what we have for these are these are the postcards that are going to go into the envelope so we have this envelope on this side, an envelope on this side, so a postcard for each one of those. Now, what I like to have is, because when you stick this postcard in here, you're gonna see part of that. So what I want to do is make sure that I have this on this side, and I have this on this side. So when I place those in the pockets, I'm going to see this plaid print and that strip of the copper clay. Um, so that's what my plan is. But the beauty of paper crafting is you can actually um, do it different than I did. So the, the, that's part of the creating. So what I'm going to do, I put my adhesive on here. I am going to bring this back into place. I like using the wall on my Simply Scoring tool or my paper trimmer. There's a slight wall right here. And if I push my cardstock up to that, and then I can push this up to that because I want this one flush to the edge. Then I can look for being flush right there and then I can place that down. So this time I wanted it flush here. My tutorial I just released yesterday, I had it flushed right here, but that's okay. Um, when I say that is because now I'm gonna, this is gonna be in the pocket. We're gonna turn this over and we're gonna put one of these on here. So um, I'm going to put my adhesive on it. And then I'm going to do what I did on yesterday's tutorial. I'm going to push this up to the wall because this is going to be inside, inserted like that. 
It does not matter what side I put this on, and I'm just going to put it on this side. I tend to usually put them on the left side, like so. Since I'm, um, okay, I'm gonna, I was gonna jump ahead, but I'm not gonna jump ahead. So that's for that pocket. We're not going to put it in yet because we need to decorate it. Let's do this pocket. So again, we're going to put this on the edge. So I cut it, as I mentioned, slightly less than one inch. Even though one inch is what I have on my measurements, um, you, can, you can cut it more or less. So that's going to be inserted like that. So I'm going to flip this over and adhere this to the other side. And I'm just going to give it about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch spacing there. I'm done with this cutting. I'm going to move that out of the way. Now what I'm going to do is bring in these panels. Now we have decorative panels. We have... Um, Okay, I'm sorry, we already did that. Large panel one, we have quantity seven. And I have those for this project in basic black. I have seven of them. They're three and th a quarter by four and a quarter. Four of them are for the postcards. So what I'm going to do is adhere these to the postcards. So, what I do want to tell you is when I put this in the pocket, if I overlap the black onto this designer or this decorative panel here, strip, it will be visible. I'm just going to butt it right up to it. Look for equal spacing here and here. So I'm going to offset this one like so. This is where you can place a photo for the pocket. I'm not going to adhere these because I'm just going to give the person I give the, the book to to say you can put um, a three by four photo in here. I will give them the basic white paper in case they want to journal on that instead of a photo. On the other side, I'm going to go like that. I'm going to just center it. Again, this is for a photo. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to take one of these. I'm going to put my adhesive on the back. I'm going to center this one. And I'm going to turn this one over. And for this one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put it right up to that. So it's flush to that. Look for equal spacing on the top and bottom. And there we go. So this is going to be inserted in this pocket, and that's where I told you you can visually see, you don't see the black, and I just like how that works and how that looks. So this one I'm going to insert here, and that's space for two photos in each pocket. So that's eight photos, I'm sorry, four photos. Um, there we go, four photos right there. All right, so we have those done. So let's bring this book back in and let's start with decorating these other panels. So now what I have here is a two by, or two and three quarter by two and three quarter circle. I will tell you that I use the stylish shape dies. I use the largest die for that. And then for the next panels, I just cut some cardstock. This is to represent the photos. So I'm going to put this photo, or um, I guess they're photo mats is really what we're putting on here. I'm going to place this one up towards here. Now on this prototype, what I did, or my sample here, is I put it on a, a shape like that. I think for this one, I'm going to put it just like that, about equal across from here. And then you can see the difference. So then when you create it, you can decide it, how you want to do that. I am going to offset it just a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to offset it just a little bit here, off to, a little bit more to the left, like so. Now, did I, what did I do with all those things? So here is where I got this. So this is from the kit. 
And then I bordered it on the back side with one of the stylish shape dies. So what I did was I cut three of this large square, one of the large circle, two of these large banners, and one of the small banners. And one of these banners is going to be layered right like this. I stamped this with one of the stamps and then I adhered it to this banner and cut it flush. So I have that. So on my sample, I put, I'll always be by your side. I decided to put that at the end of the book. I decided to put, you make my heart happy, the beginning of the book. So what I'm going to do is put my adhesive on the back and I'm going to adhere this right like so. Now, this dog image is from the kit, and I wanna make sure when I adhere things down, I don't adhere anything to this black mat because I want the person I give it to to be able to insert the white paper and adhere it or cut a photo and put that. So when I put this dog, I wanna make sure, I'm gonna use the dimensionals that come in the kit. I'm going to put one dimensional right there. That's going to be that top portion of the dog. I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to just put three across the bottom and one a little bit higher like so. Take the backings off and backing off that one and then adhere this. So that way they can put that photo right there and adhere the photo. I'm going to take a heart from the kit and place right here. And then these hearts that I have, they're cherry cobbler. They're from the mini catalog. It's glimmer paper that's called festive glimmer paper. It comes, I think, granny apple green, um, garden green and cherry cobbler. And what I did was I cut those out. I used a die set that is in the annual catalog and I cut the big hearts out with this die. Some of the hearts are cut out with that die and some of them are cut out with this little die. This is part of the um, Adoring Hearts hybrid folder. You get the dies in the folder and there's also a coordinating stamp set. So I did some of that ahead of time. So I'm going to take one of these smaller hearts and I put adhesive sheet behind this already so I just peel the adhesive sheet backing off and I'm going to put this heart right like that. So that's my first pages. And then I'm going to turn this page and turn this page. So here I put a mat for that is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So the photo can be three by four. I'm going to move it up a little bit. I have more space here, less space there. So I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to take this same dog image. And now when I place this, I can see that what I want to do is I'm going to place this photo, pretend the photo's placed there. And this time I'm going to place half a dimensional on this ear right here. So when I say half a dimensional, you can cut the edge of your dimensional sheet or you can um, cut one in half. And I'm just gonna put one right there so it goes right on the edge. And then I'm going to place three of them right down here. And take the backings off. And as I mentioned, the reason I'm doing this is I want the person I give this to to be able to insert the photos of their choice. And they need to be able to get that photo behind that image. All right, so we have that. I don't have anything as far as embellishments on here. I have another square on this side. So we'll put that down next. And I have this a little bit towards the bottom. And then I used another one of these, and this is where I said that I wanted to switch these around. So in front, I put the, you make my heart happy, and then I'm going to put, I'll be, I'll always, um, always be by your side in the back. 
So I used Momento ink to adhere these. And once I adhered the banner, I cut it flush because I'm going to put it right up to the edge here. And the beauty of this is you can duplicate what I'm doing or you can you can change it and do it different. And if you don't have glimmer hearts and adhesive sheets and the dies to cut these, you can use other other designs. You can stamp the little hearts. If you have a little heart stamp set, you can do that. And let's see, I'm going to get one more little heart there. Let's see. They all look the same size. Maybe I forgot to, to cut all of them or they might have slipped. And there we go. Thought I had another little one. Here we go. So I'm going to take the backing off. And I put adhesive sheet behind the glimmer paper to make it easy to adhere that. So that's for a photo. We already have our postcard in there. We're going to open this up. And we have two more spots for the four or three by four photos, I'm going to place this down. Now you can see on my prototype, if you look really close, you can see a seam there because I, I put two one by five and a half there. This one we cut to be two. Um, this is my prototype. And I also stamped those. I chose not to stamp this next one, which is just works either way. You can stamp it or not stamp it. So for this dog, what I'm going to do is place it right here. So I'm going to also take half a dimensional and I'm going to take half a dimensional and put it on the far end of right there, the back of the leg. And then I'm going to take and put three dimensionals right below the black cardstock. Take the backings off everything and these dimensionals as I mentioned are right in the kit so that works out really great you already get that adhesive and put that like so and that allows a photo to go right underneath you can put another photo here on this I have a sentiment that is in the stamp set and I already stamped that on one of the banners that I cut from the stylus shapes. Then I layered some a black stylus shape behind it, and then I trimmed it flush. And this one, I'm going to put regular adhesive on it, and I'm going to have it higher so you can, I'm gonna have it higher so it won't interfere with the photo when the photo goes down. So that's this part. And the only thing I have left to show you is the outside and how I did the front and the back. So now what we want to do is look at the front and the back. So for the front, I use this. So I punch this out and I use this circle. And I stamped on it, best friends forever. And then I took the black circle from the stylus shape dies the largest die and i adhered the two together so i put adhesive on the back of this and adhered this okay so then for this one i used the um, crumb cake in the um, baker's 20 essential pack you get five different colors i think i'm going to use black for this one i have 20 inches of baker's twine so what I'm going to do is take the baker's twine. Now all of these cut here, I'm going to just kind of organize a little bit. These are all representing the photos or the journaling in the book. And so now we have all these hearts here left. I have more hearts here than we need for the project. So let me just get back. And then we have this. and. That's what we have left to assemble. So back to the Baker's Twine. What I like to do is attach this first. So I put half of it or mark the halfway mark, put that there and then tie it into a bow on the side. 
Now, this still doesn't have the photos in it, so it needs room to grow. So we're gonna keep that in mind. So I'm going to put this right in the center here. And what I'm going to do is, um, I did this different um, on each one of them. I kind of just decide how I wanna do this. I'm going to take my dimensionals and hold my dimensional right here. So I secure that baker's twine so it doesn't fall off, it stays with the book. I'm going to be attaching this to the baker's twine. So what I'm going to do is put some dimensionals on the front or on the back. So I'm putting down here and up here. Sometimes I adhere this with adhesive. It all depends upon what you wanna do. Now, if you were going to mail this and try to mail it as a large envelope, it's, I mean, because it's more than a quarter inch, you might not want to add the dimensionals. But I think it's best to um, mail it in a padded envelope. So I'm going to place this down. Now I'm going to take the dog and I'm going to attach that like so. So I'm going to take and put dimensionals, three dimensionals on the very end bottom of the back of the dog and then I'm going to take some adhesive and put right here and by putting the adhesive right there and the dimensionals here the dimensionals are going to go below the circle and the adhesive is going to adhere to the circle so that's going to be flush like so this is a uh, a glimmer heart that I cut. No, that one's not. This one has adhesive on the back. So I'm going to peel that off. I am going to put one dimensional right behind this portion because that's going to hang off the circle a little bit. I'm going to put one here. I'm going to take this little guy. Now these are the ones I put adhesive on the back so I can peel the backing off and put that down. And then I'm going to put one here. So I'm pretty sure that I had one here. Oh, is it right here? It didn't stay. Gotta make sure you push those down and get them to burnish and, and adhere well to your projects. Um, Sometimes I forget to do that. It's best to go in and burnish everything, get that adhesive to adhere well. So that's the front. Now I've secured the ribbon in the front, so I don't need to secure it in the back. So in the back, what I'm going to do is put one dimensional below it, two right above it, and I'm going to have that ribbon or that Baker's Twine, twine right between it. I'm going to take my backings off and this heart does not have adhesive on the back. And I'm going to place that down and that's going to hold it in the back. So that is the book. And as I mentioned, I think um, it's adorable and it's a great gift for any of your friends who have pets. I'm gonna give you a quick sneak peek here of the cat one. My PDF will include photos of this one. So I used, oh, I like, I need to burnish those. Be sure you burnish those hearts because I just did this right before the video. So this one I use Baker's or um, Basic Gray and I have this on the inside and I did the same thing where I made sure that I just saw that strip when I looked through there. So the images are different, the cardstock is different and the sentiments are the same. I use different glimmer paper. I stamped with, um, this is um, Petal Pink, and this is the cat book. Now, if you have a friend who has both cats and dogs, you can combine them. You can make a book that has both of those. So I hope you enjoy this project. And as I mentioned, I have a PDF that you can download that will give you the photos and the measurements. There'll also be a link to this video. This video is the instructions, and I hope you enjoyed this project. Thank you for stopping by. Take care and happy creating.